Hello and welcome to Op Art with Complementary Colors. Today we're going to be taking what we've learned about color theory and applying it to a composition that makes an optical illusion or op art. For this activity you will need some paper, either printer paper or index cards, a pencil and a marker, and you'll also need something to color with. I'm showing markers and color pencils in this and a ruler of some sort or straight edge. So today we'll be talking about complementary colors and those are colors that are opposites on the color wheel. You see a couple examples here and you just need to pick the the two colors that are opposites that you like the most. We'll also be using some lines today. We'll be using horizontal lines and vertical lines to make a crisscross pattern and we'll be using diagonal lines. We're also going to be thinking about a ratio, one half, or half of your paper. So whatever your paper is, index card or printer paper, today we're going to be thinking about folding it in half or dividing it into halves, aka 0 0.5. I'm sure you heard of that. So we'll be thinking about that today as we're working. In the first part of our lesson today, we're going to be making our optical illusion art, or op art, and then in the second part of today's lesson, we'll be looking at our color wheel to figure out how we want to color ours. So go ahead, pause the video and prepare, collect your materials, and get ready to start. So as we begin, I'm going to start by folding my paper in half uh, one way and then folding it in half again and then folding it in half a third time. So in the end, my paper will be divided into eight sections, rectangle type shapes. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get my ruler and my pencil. I'm going to create a border. I'm going to start by putting dots, one dot in each corner, and then I will connect those dots. If you remember uh, from any Zentangle lessons you may have had in the past, this is a good way to get started on your composition so you know where your boundaries are. All right, after you've made your border, I'm going to start tracing those fold lines and that, was, that will give me uh, these straight lines that divide up my composition. And you could use your ruler for this or you can freehand it like I am. As you can see, I'm freehanding it, but my lines aren't perfectly straight, so it just matters how much you want to do it. Next, I'm going to add my diagonal lines into those rectangles. So they're going to go from corner to corner, and for this, I will definitely use my ruler. So Make sure it goes from corner to corner. Get your ruler set up correctly first, then take a little breath and breathe out as you draw your line. That's how I like to do it. Make it one smooth action. That's just a little pro tip. That's how I do it. I find it quite relaxing. And because we're using pencil to begin with, you know, if you make any mistakes, you can erase it and go back and fix it. That's fine. All right, now that we've got our rectangles, I'm going to add another rectangle in the corner and we're going to put a pattern in there. So first let's look at how we're going to do that. I'm going to bring my pencil from the top line down to my diagonal line and then over to the side creating a new smaller rectangle in the top right corner. It's very important that your small rectangle has its bottom left corner on the diagonal line. We're going to repeat that pattern for all of our sections, our rectangular sections, right there on the corner. There we go. So I'm going to give you a little zoom in here and show you what I'm talking about. Right there is where I want my box to be, my rectangle. I'm going to bring the line straight down until it intersects or touches that diagonal line, and then I bring it over to the side. Now, if you make any little mistakes, we can still fix it because we're using pencil. But when you switch to marker, uh, you can't fix mistakes. You have to hide them. So right now, while we can, we'll fix mistakes. I'll show you another common mistake. So 
When you're bringing it down, sometimes you might start to bring your line over before it has touched the line. That's going to uh, change the picture. It won't create that illusion that we're looking for. So go ahead and bring it down all the way till it touches that line. Then you can bring your line over. And if you need to erase anything, go ahead and take care of that now. So I'm going to finish up my rectangles, my small rectangles. I'm going to start adding these star shapes and uh, maybe a moon if you want. I'll show you how I make that star shape. I just use four little curvy lines. You may have seen these kind of stars before. To me, they're the easiest kind. But if you have a different kind of star shape that you'd like to use in your small box, in your small rectangles, that's fine. Use whatever star shape you like to draw. I'm just using this to create the illusion of a sky behind my 3D image. And put the moon in here. Little crescent moon. All right. Go ahead and finish those up. That will take a few minutes. And when you're done, it should look something like this. And we will be ready to go over our lines with our marker. So once you've got your pattern ready, go ahead and trace with marker. And I'm playing this video a little bit sped up just so you don't have to watch it all day. But this part of the activity, uh, once you get up to this part, you should have spent maybe about 20 to 30 minutes on it. So if you need to take a break after this, before you start coloring, uh, I think that's a wise thing. But if you want to power through, that's cool too. I'm just going to let you guys watch me trace my lines here, trying to be very careful. Next, I'm going to be coloring in my small rectangles with black. And I like to trace my shapes that I've drawn inside them first with the marker. That way I don't color over them by accident. And fill in the empty space around my stars and my moon. This will also take some time, so be prepared to sit with it for a little while. When you're done tracing your lines and filling in, uh, you can come back with your eraser and erase your pencil lines to clean up your edges and make everything look nice and pristine. Next, we're gonna get into coloring. So let's look at our color wheel. Decide on the complementary colors you want. I've got some pairs here like yellow and purple, green and red, blue and orange. Those are very typical and they help your composition to pop, show that contrast. Well, that's it for now. I hope you end up with something you like, and I'll see you in the next video.